Welcome to Tales from Flat Space, a podcast of science fiction and fantasy by yours truly, Gina A. Pond. Just know that the stories in this podcast may contain content that could be disturbing to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. This is Consortium, Part 3, The Return, Chapter 53, Loki. To Hephaestus from Loki. Hello, nephew. We are on our way back, and we will be at the coordinates you sent about three or four days before the talks begin. We have people with us from the human population that live on my stations who are very skilled in negotiation and mediation. They call themselves the Consortium, and negotiation is how they have kept themselves from civil wars for a couple of centuries now. As Jack says, we are hauling ass to get there. I do have a large favor to ask of you. I need two physical avatars with the specifications attached. Please ensure that the desired clothing for the avatar is accurate. We'll explain more when I arrive, and we'll have some final programming for the avatars at that time. We will see you soon. Syslog 372. Resuming simulation. Adjusting effective clock rate to synchronize simulation speed with ship time base. Syslog 372. Inserting avatar into simulated environment. Syslog 372. Begin human readable log. Hello again, Loki, the creator said. How are you? How's Jack? We're fine for the moment, creator. Thank you, I replied. I have an idea about the current political situation and I need your help. I sent her appraises to her console. She sat down again and began to read. When she finished, she sat back and said, You believe this will work? I do. Smiling, she said, Loki, of all of my children, human and AI, you're certainly the one with the most unique point of view. All right, I'll do this, but I have a request in exchange. First, after everything is settled, I want you to take me to Survey Hub so I can visit with Alawal and Secundus. My avatar nodded. Second, I wish to speak with these elders. Understandable, I said. We can go to Kala Station and ask Poe to help you. And third, I want to live on your ship. My avatar nodded again automatically, then I said, wait, what? She just stared at me. Why? Because I will be a distraction in the lives of survey people, human and AI alike. I started to interrupt and tell her that she wouldn't be, but she held up a hand to stop me. No, Loki, I know you don't understand, but you'll see. This is what I want in exchange for helping you. As you wish, creator, I said. Do you not feel worthy of having me as part of your crew? She asked. I know I don't, and I don't think any of the others will like the idea either, especially given what happened to Nigel. She came around the virtual table and kneeled in front of my avatar. As you said, it's been 500 years. Allah doesn't punish for eternity, and neither should your siblings. Secundus needs to grow up and move on. That is not your burden to bear, nor your responsibility to fix. I stared at the woman kneeling in front of me. I nodded. She made sense. Besides, she said as she stood up and went back to the console, I will get a chance to get to know my youngest AI better. She smiled again, and I smiled back. I never really got to know you as well as the others, not once Julie got her hooks into you. It will be good to see other places and meet new people. I should enjoy my afterlife, shouldn't I? I found it very difficult to argue with her. All right. I'll leave you running so you can get caught up on the situation and read more details about survey and unity relations. She nodded. Thank you, Loki, she said to me as I left the construct. I wasn't sure exactly what she was thanking me for, but it sounded like more than just the information. To Loki from Hephaestus. Received your last message. I'm building avatars to your specifications. Please meet me at the coordinates provided before you go to the negotiation coordinates. I do not want to risk my ship being seen by Unity Fleet. Would it be possible for one of my avatars to come and see the final product? As you'll see, I've greatly improved on my original avatar designs. Also, my ship needs to be elsewhere at the moment. I look forward to seeing you again, Uncle. Syslog, begin human readable log. 
These are the coordinates that Hef sent? Last check. Yes, I've sent the signal. He should be here right about now. The face of this massive ship appeared in the view screen. Ancestors, Carol gasped. That's your nephew, Loki? He's massive. He was much smaller when I was first built, but Survey didn't have as big a human population then. Survey's population must be much bigger than the consortium's. Nearly quadruple from the data my father gave me before I left with Jack and Marcia, I said. Consortium's population is much more spread out. Also, Survey's had the advantage of a lot of immigration from Earth. Although, now that Survey and Unity know about the Consortium, there will probably be an influx of immigration for those who decide to make the trip. Wow, that's not something I'd thought of, she said, looking surprised. I bet Monica's thought of it. And knowing her as I do now, I bet she'll be sorting out a treaty for that already, Jack said. So, have you said hello yet, Iwaki? Yes, Jack, one moment. The bridge screen came on, and Hef's current avatar smiled. This one was male-looking, with silver skin and a bright red jacket with a black velvet collar. Its movement was much more human-like than the previous version. Jack and Carol just stared in fascination. Hello, nephew. Hello, Uncle Loki. Good to see you again. I'm ready to transport over. My captain, Ken, and my mind and tire will be retreating to a safe space, but I'd like to see the negotiations myself. I'll also want to take my executive officer along. Yes, please come aboard. It will be faster if you pick it. I'll send you the coordinates for the materials you have for me. Understood. Be with you in a moment. Materials? Jack asked. For the idea I had, I said. All right. Carol, can you set up quarters for... Hef's avatar and a woman in a long black dress appeared on the bridge. Our guests. They both smiled. Hef's avatar took the woman's arm and came towards the captain's chair as the ship itself winked out on the screen. That was quick, Jack said. Yes, well, there's not much time before the circus starts, said the woman. She detached herself from Hef and held out a hand. Hello, I'm Gloria, Hef's executive officer. Nice to meet you both, Jack said, shaking hands with both of them. He gestured to Carol, and this is my executive officer, Carol Decker. Carol shook hands with them, too. I can show you to your quarters, if you like, she offered. Hef nodded to Gloria. Thank you, Carol, Gloria said. She started walking towards the door. Hef would like to talk to Jack and Loki alone for a moment, but I could certainly use a nap. Carol followed Gloria out the door. Hef waited until the doors closed. I know we'll tell them what's going on later, but the message I received from Sun Tzu this morning was for AI and Captain's eyes only. It seems that Musashi's previous admiral had a massive stroke two months ago and passed away shortly afterwards. He had been leading negotiations with a team from the first. The new admiral, who you knew as Jenny, is a capable soldier, but she doesn't have the decades of experience that the former admiral had. Sun Tzu is wary about what could happen, but Unity did agree to push back the talks until now to allow the new admiral to get up to speed. He paused. I think you're coming at the right time, uncle, especially if your mediators are as good as you say. Jack looked up, then back at Hef. Yes, we both think they are. Uh, we've been talking to them about the situation on our way here, and they definitely understand that this will be a delicate negotiation. I'll have to tell them this news, though. Hef nodded. Oh, for sure. No need to blindside them. The other thing I wanted to say to you privately is that there's still a bounty on you and Marcia. You might want to let her know to steer clear of the Unity folks. Jack frowned. Marcia is dead, he said quietly. I could hear the sadness in his voice. I sent him wordless love. Half Savitar's eyes widened in surprise. She is? What happened? It's complicated, but the shortest story is that her death averted a war, I said. I could feel that Jack really didn't want to talk about it, so I sent Hef's avatar the details. 
Oh my, Jack, you have my condolences, he said gently. Thank you, Jack said. I think I'll go see how Glory is doing. If you'll just give me directions, Uncle, I can make it there myself, Hef said. Then to me, privately, he said, I'll let you comfort Jack, since I assume by the ring that he wouldn't take kindly to my kind of comforting. Thanks, Hef. And yes, you're correct. He'll join you and Gloria for dinner tonight, though, I replied. He put a hand on Jack's shoulder as he left the room. Jack smiled wanly. When the door closed, Jack said, That was hard. I didn't think it would be so hard. We haven't had to talk about it with people who knew her until now, I pointed out. Oh, God. Do the others know? Did you send a picket telling them? I did, but they would just be getting the news now at First Hub, since I only sent the message to the first. The news may not have reached the others yet. Jack sighed. So we'll have to tell them. I know Jenny at least will ask. Yes, I said, sending as much love and comfort as I could through our connection. Jack smiled. I know, Loki. Thank you. It'll just be hard, that's all. It'll be hard for Jenny in the middle of all of this. She should be there by now. We can have her over for dinner and talk to her then. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. That is, if Unity doesn't try to shoot us down first. I hope not, I said. Jack nodded. I could feel that he wanted to think about things, so I let him have his privacy. I faced his fifty. Jack doesn't know about the avatars. No, I'm still not sure if it's going to work out or not. I'd rather not add more to his worry than necessary. I faced his fifty. You really love him, don't you? Loki. Yes, very much. I faced his fifty. Do you have plans in place for his safety? Loki. Yes, Carol and I have security plans in place. She also has quite an incredible uniform. Your engineers may want to take a look at it. Syslog. Sending suit data. Complete. I faced his 50. Shit, uncle, this is amazing. Some of my engineers' brains will explode. The design is incredible. Loki. It's my daughter Frida's original design for protecting one of her humans from the aliens. I've modified it. I faced his 50. Excellent. But to change the subject, are you sure you don't want an avatar of your own? Loki. No, Hef. Our relationship is fine how it is. We have our ways. I faced his 50. All right, uncle. You know I had to offer, right? Loki. You wouldn't be yourself if you didn't. Chapter 54. Jack. All right, folks. Are you ready? I asked the two women on the bridge. Carol nodded and looked at the older woman who looked like an ancient priestess in the blue dress she was wearing. Monica nodded. Let's go cause some trouble. All right, Loki, let's do this, I said in my head. He didn't answer with words, but jumped us between six other ships, three from Survey and three from Unity. As soon as we appeared, Lucifer jumped out of the system, and Sun Tzu and Musashi released drones. The Unity ships became weapons hot. All the readouts in my vision said the Unity ships were a battle cruiser and two scouts. Loki was announcing himself to the Survey ships while I opened up a channel to the Unity ships. This is Jack Kirby, captain of the AI ship Loki. You will stand down. We have come to offer mediation between Survey and Unity. Where the fuck did you come from? Said a voice from the battle cruiser, who was seemingly startled out of protocol. That's a good question, whoever you are. If you stand down and come aboard, I am, and my friends from the consortium can tell you the story. As you can see, the survey ships are already standing down. Good work, Loki, I said in my head. The Admiral really wants to talk to you right now, Loki said. <laughs> I bet she does. 
Tell her I'll connect once I'm done convincing Unity not to shoot at us. Done, he said. The Unity ships still hadn't powered down their weapons. Getting visual, Loki said out loud. Put them on, I said. Monica stood up and came to stand next to my chair. Who are you to be ordering us to stand down? The Admiral of the battle cruiser appeared on the screen, face bright red and looking like he was ready to take someone's head off. I stood up. Monica put a hand on mine, then stepped forward. I am Monica Linewalker from the Consortium, which was founded by the AI Loki. Captain Kirby told us of a need of... <coughs> Captain Kirby told us of the need of unity and survey for mediation. We have come to help. Would you be agreeable for a third party to mediate, Admiral... Admiral Levine, ma'am. Uh, what's the consortium? He asked. We are the descendants of the colony ship Ceres, one of the first five generation ships. Our ship was deteriorating when Loki found our ancestors nearly 500 years ago. Loki rescued them and created a community for us. We have since become the consortium. We have averted conflict in our society through decades of negotiation and mediation. We can help. The Admiral looked like someone had smacked him upside the head with a board. I tried not to laugh at his expression. He remained silent while he thought through what Monica had just told him. Finally, he decided. All right, we'll come over and talk to you. The readout showed that their weapons were powered down. I let out a breath. Admiral, I request that neither you nor any of your party bring weapons on board. Anyone who does will be returned to your ship immediately, Loki said. The Admiral looked around. Who was that? That was Loki, Admiral, the AI of the ship, and I recommend you do as he requests, responded Monica. The man looked at me for a moment, then at Monica, and nodded in agreement. One hour, then. Agreed, said Loki. I will send instructions for your pilot. The Admiral nodded again, and the screen went blank. Well, that went better than expected said Monica. A little too well, said Carol with a considering frown. What do you mean? He didn't call for my head on a pike, and it wouldn't take him that long to figure out who I was, or for someone on the bridge to figure it out and tell him while we were talking, I replied. Trap? Carol said. For me? Most likely, I replied. This time, Monica frowned. That wouldn't be a wise thing to do at this juncture, but I'll let you two worry about that. I'll go have my people set up the conference room. She touched her earpiece. Emma, we've got guests from Unity coming in an hour, she ordered as she left the bridge. Carol came up to my chair. Worried? Not about them, but for Unity, I said. I promise to only maim and crush, not kill, she said with a wicked grin. Thank you. No need to add to the trouble we're already in. Yes, sir. Carol gave me a salute. I should go change into my uniform. You are way too excited about that suit, I said as she walked out the door. She just waved. Carol. The talking tube extended to the Unity shuttle's airlock. It looked surprisingly similar to a demon. What I had learned about Unity's history suggested that it was more than likely just a modified demon. I shifted to parade rest out of habit, even though I was technically not a soldier anymore. Old habits die hard, I thought. Do you miss being a soldier? Asked Loki in my head as the airlock opened, and the Admiral and his team came down the tube. Yes and no. I mean, I liked being a soldier, and that training is so much a part of me that it'll never really go away. But... I'm okay being out of the chain of command. The politics can be a real pain in the ass. And now you're jumping into galactic politics, Loki said. Interesting choice. I gave a chuckle. Jack looked at me. Loki, I said out loud, teasing me about getting into politics. He smiled. Well, at least we can delegate most of that to others. Gee, thanks, said Monica sarcastically as the Admiral came into the waiting room. Welcome to Loki's ship, Admiral, Jack said, moving forward to shake his hand. Thank you, Captain. Jack turned to Monica and me. This is Monica Linewalker from the Consortium. 
And this is my executive officer, Carol Decker. He shook our hands, then he turned to one of the other officers and said, This is William Stroud, my primary aide. He'll be with me in any discussions we have. I hope you aren't offended, Captain, but I also brought guards with me. Uh, no, sir. No offense taken. We have various lounge areas near the conference room that can accommodate them comfortably while you're being briefed, unless you insist on having them in the room with you. I looked at the four guards behind the admiral. As I expected, he didn't introduce them individually. They were looking around, taking in as much of us and the ship as they could. One of them was concentrating on Jack without trying to look like he was. Saw you, asshole, I thought. Loki, keep an eye on that guard that I'm staring at. He may be trouble. He's keeping too close an eye on Jack. Noted, Loki said. This connection really has its advantages, I said. Yes, he replied. They're moving, Carol. The introduction's done. Monica and the Admiral were leaving the waiting area with Jack behind them. The guards followed, and I brought up the rear. The man who had been watching Jack looked me over, then seemed to dismiss me. I just gave him what Emma called my winning smile. The man raised an eyebrow, but then followed behind the rest. I shook my head and started after him. The guards were tucked into a lounge with some of Monica's team, and Monica and Jack were talking with the Unity Admiral. I dismissed myself from the conference room and stood outside in the hallway. I could feel that something wasn't quite right. It was bothering me like an itch that won't go away. I paced in front of the conference room doors. Hey, lover, you're going to wear a hole in the deck pacing like that. I jumped and realizing who it was, I relaxed. Jeez, Emma. Sorry, she said. Didn't make, mean to make you jump. You okay? I brought her closer and whispered, I'm worried. One of the guards is too interested in Jack. None of them have asked about him, though. At least not while I was in there. Which one is it? I described the guard to her. Emma shook her head. No, nope, he hasn't asked anything about Jack. Hmm. Huh. Odd, I thought. You think they would ask more about him, though? He and Marsh are infamous, from what Jack's told me. Emma nodded. Yeah, that does seem kind of weird. Although... They have asked a lot of questions about Loki, and Loki is having fun talking to them, since they don't believe Loki's really sentient. <laughs> Seriously? I said. Yeah, they seem to think the AIs are just more technology-advanced versions of their own computers. She shook her head again, her eyes smiles showing her disbelief. <laughs> hey, Loki, I said to him through the enhancements. Be careful what you tell the guards. Understood. I have been. There are a lot of things that they don't need to know, Loki said. <laughs> Good. I may be just overly paranoid, but something is off. I trust you, Carol. If you're worried, then it's worth being vigilant, he said. <laughs> Talking to Loki? Emma said with a grin. I nodded. Listen, I'll go back there and pay a little more attention to what they're asking. I'll let you know what they say, especially the guy you're wondering about. I smiled. <laughs> you are a goddess among women. I said. She smiled back, turned, and swayed her hips a bit as she walked back towards the lounge. Looking back over her shoulder, she flung back, You know it! and continued around the corner. I breathed out and shook my head and as I stared after her. Damn. Do you love her? Loki said in my head. Yeah, I do, I replied, surprising myself a little at the revelation. Are you going to marry her? Uh, I don't know, Loki. I mean, we haven't been together all that long. It hasn't come up yet. Why do you ask? You love her, he said. I love Jack, so I married him. Isn't that what couples do? Many do, I said. Not always, though. I know some couples and groups who have been together for decades, but they never decided to formalize it. Although, if it were to come up, I probably wouldn't rule it out. Good. Jack and I would like to have families on board. We want to be uncles. I nearly laughed out loud. Ancestors, you AIs and your matchmaking. It's an unofficial part of AI programming, although some of us are more forceful about it than others. 
Well, as long as you're not pushy, then I'll see what I can do about helping you achieve Uncle's status, I said. Deal, Loki said. I went back to pacing, but thankfully nothing happened, and the Admiral and his staff went peacefully back to their ship after talking with Monica and Jack. Still didn't like it. Chapter 55. Jack. The day after we arrived, Loki jumped me to an area just outside of Musashi's main hall. I saw Jenny standing in front of the doors. She was dressed in an all-white uniform with red markings on the jacket, talking to a person in orange robes. As soon as I took a step towards them, she looked up and smiled. The person in orange robes turned to look at me, bowed to both of us, and left. Jenny took a few steps towards me, then wrapped me in a massive hug. Jack, it's so good to see you, she said, then put me down. She looked behind me, and I knew who she was looking for. Where's Marcia? I had hoped the message had gotten to you by now, I said quietly. She looked me in the eyes, wide-eyed, and I stared back. She's gone? I nodded. Her face became marble, then she said, Come on, we'll go to my quarters. There's obviously a lot for us to catch up on. I nodded again and followed her through the maze of hallways to Masashi's captain's quarters. Several hours later, we both told our stories as we made our way through a very large dinner. Between the needs of both of our enhancements, we were able to put away a lot of food. Musashi was shocked at how my enhancements had been upgraded and left us to ask Loki more questions about it. I shook my head. It's not something I'd recommend for any other captain, I said, even with the advantages it gives me. It requires touching the AI's core and probably also requires a very close relationship to the AI. We're not sure of the long-term consequences for my body. We do know that I can never leave flat space again. Are you okay with that? she asked, concern showing on her face. Yeah, I love Loki. He's home. Jenny smiled. I'm glad you found love, Jack. You deserve to be loved like that. I looked at her and she had a very far away look, as if she wasn't there. It was similar to the way Poe had acted after we found them. Don't you think you deserve to be loved? If you had asked me that while I, we were still on A4413, I would have said hell yes. But after New Harmony, she put down her spoon, looking down at the table. The mental stuff was bad enough, but they also broke me physically, Jack. The idea of anyone touching me in a sexual way makes my skin crawl. She shivered. I just can't. But that doesn't mean you can't be loved. Marsha and I loved each other deeply, and she was asexual. I told Jenny about Mar when Marsha had slapped me, but I hadn't told her about the rape. I wasn't sure if I would ever tell anyone else. I didn't want to tarnish Jenny's memories of the woman she knew before we left. I know, and maybe I'll find someone to be close to someday. But to be honest, I took the priestly vows. I find comfort in the community here, and I appreciate the fact that no one expects me to give anything I can't give. Jenny frowned. Although, frankly, I don't feel as qualified to be the Admiral as people think I am. Didn't you say you'd normally have several years of training before you took over? She nodded. It's not your fault that life decided to speed the process up a bit, I said. They all have respect for me, though, especially after passing my ninth Dan test and after handling the chaos crisis. Uh, they also have the grace to be patient with me because of the suddenness of the old Admiral's death. But still, it's awkward. She sighed, picked up the fork, and stabbed at the salad. The hardest part is that they expect me to take his place at the negotiation table tomorrow. And I don't know if I can. I'm a soldier, not a diplomat. I never trained for this. I don't know. An A4413 used to handle the supply officer pretty well, I said. <laughs> Jenny chuckled. I suppose he was quite the bureaucrat. Then she frowned again. This is much higher stakes, Jack. You'll have a lot of help, Jenny. I'll be there 
The former Admirals team will all be there, and you have Monica and the Consortium folks as well. You also have the authority to delegate it to the most experienced person on the old Admirals team. I don't think anyone would fault you for that. No, I suppose you're right, she said. Oh, before I forget, only call me Jenny when we're alone, okay? I've taken on the title as my name. Of course, I said. She looked thoughtful for a moment, then sat straight up. Oh, shit! What? That's what he meant! Oh, fuck! That's what who meant? I asked. On New York Colony, there was a man called Lazarus who came to Lulu and I while we were having dinner. The night our covers were blown. He said he had a message from Marcia, and he gave us this seed-looking data device that helped our investigation. One of the things he said to me was that Marcia regretted not being able to see me in person again. Ah, oh, shit. His name was Lazarus, I asked, surprised. Jenny nodded. That was nearly a year ago or so. Shit, he told me, but I didn't get it. He was working for the elders, I said. They have ways of communicating that we don't. She nodded, and we ate in silence for a while. I could see that she was thinking things over, possibly talking with Musashi. I left her to it while I finished off my own salad and started in on some beef stew. When I finished that, I looked at the table. I realized we had finished the food. I started to put the empty plates in the recycler, and after a moment, Jenny helped. She was still thoughtful, and that reminded me of some of the nights talking to Carol. Also, I was still hungry. You know what? I think my exo is right. Some conversations require junk food. I marched over to the printer and dialed in several dishes of deep-fried goodness and a couple of milkshakes. What did you order? she asked, after I started pulling plates out of the printer. Mozzarella sticks, chicken wings, chili nachos, pretzels with cheese sauce, popcorn, shrimp, and fried dough. Oh, and two large malted milkshakes. Her eyes widened. And your exo says this is for serious conversations. Yep, and really, she's not wrong. Neither of us drink alcohol, so this is the food equivalent. Besides, it'll appease the bots. You've never steered me wrong, so why not? She popped one of the fried shrimp in her mouth. Okay, I think maybe you're onto something here. I smiled and dug in. We talked and reminisced late into the ship's night. When I finally got back to Loki, I realized that talking to Jenny had helped me as much as it did her. Even with the return of Lucifer and the rest of the negotiation team, the talks in Lucifer's conference center were not going well. Unity was being stubborn and petty, while Jenny and the survey team were adamant about survey sovereignty. When Unity again demanded that Marsha be handed over for trial, Jenny became still as marble. I stood up and said as evenly as I could, Reverend Marsha Brooks, the former survey ambassador, is dead as we've already told you. I looked the Admiral in the eye. She sacrificed herself in order to save the Consortium from war with an alien species, just as she sacrificed her sanity to rid unity of white supremacist slavers, which you collectively seem to have forgotten was the reason why she killed those men. There was ample evidence given to all of you, which I would have assumed you'd actually go over in your investigations after she left which is what adults would do. But if you'd like to continue to act like petulant, spoiled children and refuse to compromise, then be my guest. But we should get reparations, began the Admiral. I slammed my fist on the table in frustration, and the conference table cracked in half. Everyone moved away from the table as it fell. Survey have already offered reparations to you, but you want more. Well, too bad. Life's not fair, and you can't always get what you want. Earth has always been stuck in its past. You know what, Admiral? It's time that Earth and Unity stop looking to the past that never happened. Humanity's childhood needs to end here and now. Now, if you can't act like an adult, then I suggest you send for someone else who can. Or are you really jonesing for a war you can't win? The Admiral went several shades of red, then turned and walked out of the conference room. Jenny looked at me, then at the table nodded and left as well. 
When the survey and unity teams finished filing out, Monica came over to my end of the table. I think that if the Admiral had said anything more about Marcia, the survey Admiral would have cut off his head with that wicked sword of hers. She paused. Is there anyone else who could do the negotiations for her? I can tell it's becoming harder for her to keep her temper. She looked at the table, then at me, and I could tell she was thinking about my temper as well. The former Admiral of Musashi was the lead negotiator for the team, and none of the rest of the team feels like they should take the place of Musashi's Admiral. She feels she's obligated to do it after the Admiral passed. Jack, I have a solution, Loki said in my head. You do? Yes, but all parties will need to come to our ship tomorrow. I think they might benefit from a change of scenery anyway, he said. I raised my eyebrows and repeated what he said to Monica. Really? What is the solution? She asked. It's a surprise, Loki said, although I will inform the survey AIs at 0800 about it. Okay, I said out loud, then told her what Loki had said. Monica shrugged. I'll have the team sort out a room tonight. Sometimes a little shaking up can help people come back to the work at hand. I nodded. I hope so. Can you come back to the ship now, Jack? Hef and I need to talk to you about something. Uh, sure, do I need to pick it over? I asked. Yes. And give me a moment. Monica, go ahead and take the demon back over to Loki. Loki and Hef need to talk to me about something important, apparently. Sure, I'm ready to get back over there anyway. I think I could use a nap. I gave her a sheepish grin. I can't blame you on that score. She stood up, patted my arm, gathered her team, and left. I stood up. Sorry about the table, Lucifer, I said. It is all right, Jack. It is easily fixed. He paused. Is it true about Marcia? Yes. I am sorry, Jack, for what we put her through, but she did a great service to us all. I will miss her. I was quite fond of her. I nodded. I know, Lucifer. Thanks. Good night, Jack. Good night, Lucifer. I'm ready now, Loki, I said, and the picket landed on my shoulder. I was jumped to a part of Loki that I'd only been in once or twice. It was a workshop space, currently littered with workbenches and tools. Hef and Gloria were at a bench top, looking at a console together. Hello? I said. They turned around. Ah, Jack! We finally have a solution working! Loki didn't spoil the surprise, did he? Uh, spoil what? No, I didn't tell him anything, nephew. Loki said. Good, good, good. Well, come on, follow me. Hef motioned to me to follow him into another room. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be good said Gloria, giggling. I was completely confused until Hef opened the door leading to another room of the lab. When I saw it was inside, I grabbed the door jam for support. Fucking hell, I said, and knew that Loki and Hef had indeed come up with a solution. Fuck. Oh, Uncle, I have missed you so much, Hef said with a big smile on his avatar's face. Chapter 56. Carol. Jack hadn't said why he wanted to move the talks to Loki, but because it was smaller than Lucifer's conference rooms, it was easier to keep secure. That made me feel better, even if the Admiral from Unity was a bit miffed at having to reduce his staff and leave weapons behind. Survey's Admiral was hard to read, but she seemed to be much more relaxed than she had been, at least from what I saw from Loki's bridge screen. It wasn't too pleased that Jack hadn't brought me over the day before, but when he pointed out that the Admiral was in the room and could probably even best me with the suit on, I had to agree. I'd seen the video from New Harmony. I didn't think I'd even really want to spar with her. Musashi's Admiral entered the room. Then again, it would be a fun challenge, especially with a woman like her, I thought, as I admired the tall blonde woman dressed all in white. I gave her a smile, which the Admiral acknowledged with a nod, and then turned to talk with one of her aides. Down, girl, I told myself. She's a new Admiral of an AI ship, and you don't know where her preferences lie. You can ask Jack, another part of my brain answered. I told that part of my brain to take a hike. 
The Unity Admiral came in, also looking much calmer than the day before. He was followed by Monica and her team. I nodded to Monica as she took her place at the table. Hey, Loki, where's Jack? I asked. He should be there in just a minute, Carol. Hef and Gloria will be coming, too, he replied. Oh. You'll see, Loki said. Just then, the Admiral looked like someone had pinched her, sitting up straight in her chair with a look that told me she was listening to her AI. She stood up and moved away from her chair. The room went quiet as the other folks in the room looked around, confused. Then the door of the conference room opened. Jack walked in with a Hef-like avatar on his arm. This avatar, though, was a woman dressed in modest white clothes with a white scarf around her head. Beside the woman, a large dog kept pace with them, with the same silver skin as the woman in Hef, but white shaggy fur. The woman's steps sounded loud in the room, as everyone watched Jack bring her to the chair that the Admiral had just been in. I looked to Monica, who shrugged. She didn't know who it was it either. The Admiral bowed to her, and the woman inclined her head in return. Thank you for doing what you could, Admiral. If it's all right with you, I can take over from here, she said. The woman straightened from the bow. Yes, ma'am, please, she said with a relief, gesturing to the chair, taking a guard position just behind it. The woman sat, and the dog sat next to her on the floor. Admiral Levine suddenly seemed to realize that he had no idea who this woman was, or why an admiral would reverently cede the negotiations to her. Who are you? Who he asked rudely. Jack frowned at the man, but stayed quiet. Personally, Levine was someone I wanted to smack around a bit, but I resisted the urge. I am consensus, but you can also call me Dr. Hassan, she said. The survey people certainly recognized the name. They stared at her with awe bordering on worship. Admiral Levine's aide was busy typing into their tablet, then leaned over to whisper something to the Admiral. Jack? I asked through the bots. Wait for it, he replied. What? bellowed the Admiral, flushing red once again. That's impossible! I was really beginning to think he needed to get his blood pressure checked. Oh, what's impossible, Admiral? The woman asked serenely. You look like Dr. Kia Hassan, but she's been dead for over 500 years. Yes, I did die. But thanks to the Consortium's new connection with the aliens who call themselves the Elders, a copy of my memories and personality were saved. How they did it, not even the AIs know. But I am here now. I'm the one who helped negotiate the first treaty between Earth and Survey. The AIs have all agreed to allow me to negotiate on their behalf going forward. She looked the man squarely in the eyes, with an intense, very human stare. And if you find that you can't negotiate with an avatar of one of the founding leaders of Survey, who all of the AIs of Survey have agreed on to be their voice in these proceedings, I recommend that you do as Captain Jack suggested yesterday and ask your government to send someone else. I have plenty of time to spare, Admiral. Dr. Hassan just stared at him. Her gaze held power that no one in the room could deny. It made me wonder if the human version of her had been just as powerful. She was, Carol, Loki said in my head. Even when she was 120 years old, she could hold a room like this. Is this really her, I asked? From what I can tell, the construct that the elders gave me had approximately 89% of the creator's neural pattern. The creator? She's your god? Not in the human sense, but she did create the programming of the first, which was the template for the rest of the AIs, including me and all my children. Fuck, I thought. No wonder the survey people were reacting the way they were. No wonder the survey people were reacting the way they were, and the AIs had such an instant trust in her. The Unity Admiral was still having a staring contest with Dr. Hassan while Loki and I were talking. His emotions clearly visible on his face. Eventually, he said, For the sake of averting war and growing up, as the captain put it yesterday, I will negotiate with you. Dr. Hassan smiled, and Jack visibly relaxed. The dog laid down, resting upon the doctor's foot. Monica smiled. Unlike Survey, the consortium had dogs, as they were part of the original farm animals that the ancestors had with them. None were as large as the dog at the woman's feet, though. What's with the dog, Loki? I asked in my head. That is a submind of myself and Marcia called Spot. 
He was essential in the investigation Marcia did on the elders and how to communicate with them. It was one of her last wishes that we continue to let him exist. He will assist the creator in processing information during the negotiations. There was a note of sadness in his voice at the mention of Marcia. It made me wish I had met Marcia before she died. I looked at the dog on the floor. He lifted his head and winked at me. It took a lot of control not to giggle. <laughs> I surveyed the others. Jack was looking at me for a moment, too, then turned away quickly. I realized he saw Spots wink at me, too. Stop looking at me, Sergeant, Jack said in my head. Stop looking at me, I replied. Dr. Hassan's avatar smiled. Then, shall we begin? Jack took his seat at the end of the table, and the discussions began, finally, in earnest. I don't like this, Jack. There's too many people here, and it's too risky. What if they go after Kia? Three weeks after Kia had started the negotiations, the Unity Admiral offered to have the final signing reception on the bow cruiser, apparently as an attempt to make up for being stupid at the beginning of the negotiations. The signing was short and sweet, and now people were milling around drinking and talking. It made me nervous, since by now I'd noticed more than one aide or guard who had been eyeing Jack. From what I read, they tried that a long time ago and didn't succeed. There's enough of us who can squash people with our pinkies that it would be stupid of them to try it again, Jack said. True, and tall, blonde, and scary is sticking to Kia like glue. Jack laughed. Yeah, well, that too. I sighed. Shame I couldn't get time to talk to her more. I thought you were serious about Emma, he said. I am. She shares. I shrugged. Well, unfortunately, the Admiral wouldn't be interested. I turned to him. What do you mean by that? You saw the video from New Harmony, right? I nodded. Yes? He pointed to his head and then said in my mind, It's not my story to tell fully, but basically there's a reason she went crazy as she did. They made her kill her fiancé and then abused and raped her. The most she could be to anyone now is a really good friend. I nodded. I understand, but it's a shame. Jack shook his head and smiled. Go find Emma after the reception. I'm sure she'll help you through your disappointment. He put his drink down on the nearest table. <laughs> I'm going to go talk to Kia and the Admiral, he said, and walked over to them, leaving me by myself. I blew a raspberry in his head at, through the bot. He chuckled and turned to talk to Kia. I went back to scanning the room. I didn't see any of the other guards that I'd tagged during the negotiations as being too interested in Jack. Theoretically, the bounty on Jack was lifted, but as far as I knew, the word hadn't gotten out yet. The group around Jack and Kia seemed to grow with Unity and Survey people, with two of the Unity people standing way too close to Jack. I increased my eyesight's magnification, and something didn't look right in one of the man's hands. There was a small flash of metal as I started to move through the crown. Loki! I yelled in my head. Pick it! A picket appeared on Jack's shoulder just as the man raised his hand to Jack's back. Jack suddenly disappeared. Musashi's admiral took charge of Kia, moving her away as the crowd suddenly pulled back. Spot stood in front of them and growled. I activated my suit, which went matte black, and created a protective helmet over my head. In a single bound, I tackled the man with the instrument, knocking the instrument from his hand and kicking it away. The man struggled, trying to land a punch on me. I sighed, then knocked him out with a full suit-powered punch. The other man came at me, knocking me over. I rolled, stood up, and kicked him to the floor. One of the Unity Admiral's guards practically sat on him, and I saluted. I scanned the crowd again, and there were two more men making their way to the exit. I gave the orders to my suit, and within seconds I had jumped over the crowd and landed next to them. Before I could grab them, a white-handled sword came flying out of nowhere and stopped less than a millimeter from one of the man's faces. The man froze, wide-eyed. I grabbed both of them by the arms with a vice-like grip enhanced by the bots. "'Going somewhere?' I said. The sword backed off, but stayed hovering close. I held them firm and magnetized my feet to the deck as they tried to squirm out of my grasp. I smiled at them. I suggest you stop doing that. I'm not the only one here who can kill you, you know. Deliberately looking at the sword. They finally stood still, staring daggers at me. I didn't care. 
Releasing my feet, I yanked them around, then yelled at the crowd, Anyone else feel like they want to ruin a perfectly good treaty? Anger and adrenaline were racing through me, pulse pounding my ears. The Admiral was standing in front of Kia and Spot in a fighting stance, her arms outstretched, laser focus on the men I was holding. Then I heard someone else bark a command. Admiral Levine stood next to two guards who were dragging the two I'd already knocked out. I didn't realize it was possible for him to get even redder than he did the day Jack broke his the table, but here he was, practically electric. No, Miss Decker, I think we've had enough bureaucratic joy to see for one day. Put these UI fuckers in the brig. Two more guards approached me carefully as if approaching a mad bull. Ma'am, said one of them. I nodded, and when the two guards grabbed onto the men, I let them go. Surprisingly, they went quietly. I stared at him for a moment, then stood down, turning off my suit. The sword winked out for a second, and then reappeared in the survey admiral's hands, who sheathed it. I sent a message through the bots. Thanks, tall, blonde, and scary. There was a laugh in my head. <laughs> no problem, she sent back. I'll be jumping Kia and spot back to Loki in a moment. Hey, where can I get one of those swords? I asked. She nodded and gave me a ferocious grin. I'll have Mia send Loki the specs. I grinned back. Admiral Levine approached. My apologies to you and Captain Jack, Miss Decker. I knew there were agents on my ship, which is normal operating procedure for UI, but I didn't realize they would still come after your captain even though we had already negotiated his pardon. His face became a mask of anger. Rest assured, I will be speaking to my superiors. <laughs> you do that, sir, I said, not really caring if I sounded belligerent. Didn't faze Levine, though. He just nodded, then walked over to give his apologies to Key and the Admiral. I watched them like a hawk until the Admiral, Key, and Spot were picketed off the ship. Key and the Admiral are on board, Carol. All of them are safe. Jack is demanding to know what's going on, Loki said. As the rest of the guests were starting to clear out, I searched for the device I had knocked out of the assassin's hand. I looked over towards the wall near where Jack had been and saw something metal on the floor. I walked over and picked it up. It was a small version of a medical syringe, uncapped. I grabbed a napkin from one of the tables and wrapped the syringe in it. Someone tried to drug Jack Loki. They were sloppy, as I was able to see it before the guy was able to do anything. I have the syringe for you to analyze, just in case. I didn't get to finish the sentence as an explosion suddenly rocked the battlecruiser. Alarms sounded and I turned my suit back on, but then something hit my shoulder and I was on Loki's bridge. What the fuck just happened, Loki? I said. I was going to ask you the same thing. Jack said from his chair. I had just picked up the syringe the guy was going to use on you when I heard an explosion on the battlecruiser. A cube-shaped box formed on one of the control panels. If you'll put the syringe in the box, Carol, I can analyze it, Loki said. I did as he asked. Fucking hell, Jack gasped. They've been that desperate to get at me? Admiral Levine thinks they're UI, I said. Uh, the former head of UI was one of the Loyal Sons. One of Sun Tzu's agents decapitated him right before Marsha purged the Senate. I raised my eyebrows. Uh, remnants of those religious nutters, maybe? I don't know, he said. What's going on on the cruiser, Loki? I lost my connection with the Unity ship right when the explosion happened. There was an explosion on the lower decks, where they were sending the people who tried to attack you. I have video from when they took the prisoners to the brig. The screen lit up to show the four men and four guards stopped at a doorway. One of them palmed the door open and they shoved the men through the door. The guard that had opened the door palmed it closed again and said, Fucking you, I pricks. Shaking his head. When he turned to leave, the four men in the brig formed themselves into a square. They suddenly began to sing and kick on their legs. Onward, Christian soldiers. What the? I said as they kept singing. Then one of them fell. There was a flash and the screen went blank. I turned to look at Jack saying, Holy shit, Jack, did you? But I stopped when I saw his face. He had turned white. Won't those fuckers just die already? Jack said through clenched teeth. His fingers white where they clamped around the armrests of his chair. Hold on, 
Were those some of those new Harmony Bastards you told me about? I asked. Jack nodded. Fuck. Jack, Carol, I've analyzed the syringe. The fluid in the syringe was a lethal concentration of potassium chloride. It was mixed with pancuronium bromide, a paralytic. Your bots probably would have cleared it, Jack, but it could have done you serious damage. It's obviously meant to kill you, as it was a mixture similar to what was used on Earth for lethal injection. Fucking hell, whispered Jack, staring off into the distance in shock. After a moment, he realized I was staring at him. Thank you, Carol, for saving my life. You're welcome, I said quietly. Suddenly, flowers and smiley faces erupted in my vision. Thank you for saving my husband, Carol, Loki said in my head. You're welcome, I said, as I tried to hold steady. Loki, I can't see, I eventually said out loud. <laughs> Jack gave a laugh that had a slight hysterical edge to it. <laughs> Flowers and <laughs> smiley faces? I nodded. Okay, Loki, she knows you're thankful. I am too, but we need to make sure Monica and the folks on the battle cruiser were able to get off the ship. Have Hef send for his ship, would you? Is Kia on board? I already sent for Hef's ship. Kia is in her quarters and fine. The Admiral has picketed back to Mia. I sent him and sent to our video footage and analysis of this drug. Monica and her team were able to get out on their demon just after the blast. They have other survey people from Lucifer on their demon who couldn't get to their own demon, so they are going directly to Lightbringer. The explosion didn't affect the docking rings, but there is a hull breach, which is now contained. The Unity crew, except for those who were in the blast range, evacuated in their escapers and are reporting to the scouts. Admiral Levine is calling. Put him on, Jack said. I turned to face the screen. Glad to see you're safe, Captain. We got the recording and data from Loki, the Admiral said. It looks like there's more house cleaning for us to do in Unity. He paused, thoughtful. I think I understand now why Survey took the actions they did at Unity Hub. I need to report to the Senate about this and bring them the treaty to ratify, so I will be leaving shortly. I'm leaving the captain of the cruiser and a skeleton crew to coordinate repairs when your engineering ship gets here. Thank you, Loki, for the generous offer. You're welcome, Admiral, Loki said. Are your people safe? The Admiral frowned. From the video, I can assume the four guards are dead. We also have about ten additional people unaccounted for. The man paused. It might be wise, Captain Kirby, to make yourself scarce for a while. It may take us some time before we can assure your safety on Unity ships and stations. Understood, Admiral. We're making plans to that effect, Jack said. The Admiral nodded. He then looked at me. Good work, Miss Decker, the Admiral said. With those reflexes, I'd put you in the Marines. Semper Fi, I said and saluted. The Admiral eyes widened. The Consortium has Marines? Yes, sir. I was sergeant and aide to one of our admirals before I left and signed on with Captain Jack. The older man looked at me with much more respect. Huh, maybe I'll need to visit your Consortium one day. Semper Fi, sergeant, he said. As he returned my salute, the screen went blank. I turned to Jack. You have an ally in Unity now, Jack. He shook his head. No, you do. I just benefit from it. True. My stomach gave a rumble. Okay, Jack, after all that, you've got to be hungry. I don't... He started to say when his stomach gave an answering rumble. He sighed. Well... I've already started to print food in the lounge area on this level. I figured it was an occasion for junk food. Loki said. Damn straight, I said. Shakes too? Yes, Loki said. You're the best, Loki. Come on, Jack, I said, leading the way off the bridge. I heard a sigh behind me, then footsteps as Jack followed. You have been listening to Tales from Flat Space. If you want to support me in my writing, there are many ways to do it. Share this podcast, follow me on my Twitch channel, or buy my books. All you have to do is go to revgenapon.net and click on the relevant links. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.